welcome to Coastlands Community Church. We are situated in Tableview, Cape Town, led by Pastor Xavier and Heather Adrianza. We are a church family that is committed to love, accept, and forgive. Our goal is to reach out, allow the Holy Spirit to bring restoration, and release people into their God-given purpose. May God bless you as we worship and hear God's Word together. Good morning, everybody. Good. Good morning. morning. Good to be in the house of the Lord this morning. Welcome to those online this morning. And uh, uh, I want to read from Psalm 105. And uh, the the Bible says, uh, and you, as, as you hear this, you can respond this morning. Psalm 105 and verse, just, just uh, a couple of verses. And it says, give thanks to the Lord and proclaim his greatness. Amen. Let the whole world know what he has done. Sing to him. Yes, sing his praises. Tell everyone about his wonderful deeds. Exalt his holy name. Rejoice, you who you worship the Lord. Search for the Lord and for his strength. Continually seek him. Remember the wonders he has performed, his miracles, and the rulings he has given. Your children of his servant Abram, your descendants of Jacob, his chosen ones. He is the Lord our God. His justice shall be seen throughout the land. Word to us this morning. He is the Lord our God. His justice shall be seen throughout the land. Amen. Let's stand together. Let's worship God together. Let's sing praises to the Lord. Father, we thank you this morning. God, what a privilege it is for us as your children to come together and worship you this morning. God, we honor you this morning. We praise you today. Thank you for, as the psalmist would remind us, let the whole world know what God has done. And this morning we come to worship and praise you, to exalt your name. Thank you that you are loving, Father, you are caring, Father. Thank you for your goodness towards us, your mercy, your grace, your provision, your sufficiency. Thank you today, Father, that we can come and exalt your name today and praise you today. Because you are God, there is none other beside you. Father, this morning we take hold of that word as we think about our nation today that you are the Lord our God and your justice shall be seen throughout this land, Father God. Thank you that that irrespective of what we see, that God, you are in control. The enemy will not, the enemy's assignment will not prevail because God is in control. We thank you this morning, Father God. We bless you this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's worship God together this morning. Amen.
mercy never fails me And all my days I've been held in your hand From the moment that I wake up Until I lay my head Oh, I will sing Of the goodness of God Sing that again you Lord for your mercy never fails me all my days I've been held in your hand from the moment that I wake up until I lay my head oh I will sing of the goodness of God All my life you have been faithful It's all my life you have been so, so good With every breath that I am able Oh, I will sing of the goodness your voice you have led me through the fire in darkest night you are close like no other I've known you as a father I've known you as a friend oh I have lived in the goodness All my life you have been faithful And all my life you have been so, so good With every breath that I am able Oh, I will sing of the goodness of God All my life you have been faithful And all my life you have been so, so good With every breath that I am able Oh, I will sing of the goodness of God Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. With my life laid down, I surrender now. I give you everything. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. With my life laid down, I surrender now. I give you everything. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. All my life you have been faithful And all my life you have been so, so good With every breath that I am able Oh, I will sing of the goodness All my life you have been faithful And all my life you have been so, so good With every breath that I am able Oh, I will sing of the goodness of God I'm gonna sing 
of the goodness of He won't fail. He 
Jesus, our, first, our firm foundation this morning. Father, come, let's just worship him this morning because he won't fail, he won't fail. We worship you this morning, Father. We worship you, Jesus. We worship you, Jesus. You won't fail us. You'll never let us down. Thank you this morning that you're the great I am, Father. You said, you said to Moses, I am who I am. And this morning we thank you today that we serve a God that is above every situation, every circumstance. Thank you that God that even when the storms of life hit, thank you this morning that you'll never fail, Father God. You will never fail. You will never fail this morning. Just uh, wherever you'll find yourself and some of us are in good space, some of us, but some of us are facing challenges this morning. I just want you to know this morning that the Lord wants you to know that you'll never fail. You'll never fail. And God is, the, this is a season where the Lord is going to begin to move and change some, some things around. And, and uh, we just have to stay in faith, keep trusting God. Put your faith in Jesus. 
this morning, just where you are today, if you're facing a challenge this morning, would you make the confession just where you are this morning that Jesus is my firm foundation? Jesus Christ is my firm foundation this morning. The rock on which I stand this morning. Even though everything around me is is shaking, thank you this morning that He will never, He will never fail me because He is my firm foundation this morning. Thank you, Father God. Jesus Christ is our living hope this morning. He's our living hope this morning. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord, this morning. Thank you that we, we, we present every care. Lord, your word says that cast all your cares upon me because I care for you. And this morning, we lay every care before you this morning. Every, every situation, every circumstance, every impossibility this morning. Everything that may seem like a mountain that stands before us today, we lay that care before you this morning. Thank you, Father, that you've, you've placed that mountain there so that others will come to know that you're a powerful God and that you can move that mountain. This morning we pray in the name of Jesus for every one of those cares. Lord, those that are sick in body, those that need a financial breakthrough, those that are suffering with emotional turmoil, Father, family situations, we just thank you this morning that you care and we can cast our cares upon you today. Oh, Father, this morning we are reminded in your word that where you say, don't worry. Don't allow worry to consume you because your heavenly Father knows. This morning, I thank you this morning that we come to you with a confidence. Confidence as we sang this morning, you won't fail. You won't fail us, God. You'll never fail us, Father God. Rain may come, winds may come, storms may come, but you'll never fail us. You'll never fail us this morning. So I want us to, uh, I want to ask you this morning, uh, if you would, join me in prayer this morning because uh, there's two situations that just desperately need our prayer this morning and uh, they're really struggling to break the infection in Cheryl Cheryl Julius some of you some of you are confused not Mike and Cheryl but Cheryl Cheryl was the, la- the lady that uh, that was in the foyer area during COVID uh, overseeing the COVID response and uh, She's been in hospital for over more than a month and a half right now. And uh, they're just battling. I spoke to Symphony this morning. And we just need a breakthrough. And then for Mike, uh, Mike had a bit of a, a setback late the latter part of this week. And um, let's just contend this morning. Would you, would you join me this morning? And let's begin to ask the Lord to intervene. Father, this morning we thank you that we serve a God of the impossible, God. We as your family, we come to, together and we come into agreement this morning for their, their breakthrough this morning in the name of Jesus. We pray for their breakthrough this morning. A breakthrough of their health this morning in the name of Jesus. I pray for fresh hope to come into their hearts this morning. I pray that they will not give up, but they would join us this morning in saying, you won't fail, you won't fail, you won't fail, Father. And God, we know that you won't fail, and we ask you this morning, in the name of Jesus, move that mountain, touch that situation, break that fever, break that infection, destroy it. Lord, heal Mike this morning, touch him, I pray in the name of Jesus this morning. Father, we call upon your name today. Thank you today, Father, that you are the same yesterday, today, and forever. Thank you that you're the same yesterday, today, and forever. Thank you, Jesus. You won't fail. You won't fail this morning. You won't fail this morning. Thank you, you won't fail this morning. 
Let's sing that, that part. We just make, would you make that your declaration, not only over your life this morning, but can you, can you make that declaration on behalf of others this morning? Maybe it's family, maybe it's the situation this morning. Let's make that, a, let's make that our faith declaration this morning. He won't, he won't, he won't fail, he won't fail, he won't, he won't, he won't Thank you, Jesus. We put our faith and trust in Jesus this morning. Thank you, Father. Thank you, God. Amen. Would you take your tithes and offering and let's, get, let's be prepared to give to the Lord this morning. Amen. Isn't that a powerful declaration? 
know what the Bible says? It says in these times everything that can be shaken will be shaken. So we need to have that firm foundation on, uh, on the Lord. Thank you so much, Theon, for leading us this morning. Now, kids are ready to go with uh, Auntie Louisa this morning. Amen. All our kids. And um, let's come to the word this morning. Father, thank you today. What a privilege it is for us to hear your word and to receive from you this morning. Thank you for the presence of the Holy Spirit here this morning. Thank you that, uh, Lord, we need your Holy Spirit like never before in these days that we find ourselves. You're calling us as a family to, to go deep and wide and, Lord, deeper in our relationship with you. My prayer is that every one of us would take it to the next level because uh, undoubtedly the, the worth will flow out of the depth and uh, our impact and influence will be great because of our relationship with Jesus. And so this morning I, I pray and ask you as we come to your table, we come to your word, that um, we would receive what you have for us today. We are so dependent on you. Lord, you spoke to us uh, weeks ago about needing the Holy Spirit like never before. And I pray that this will, so, will, this will be such a, a shift in our hearts that in every situation that we find ourselves, that we will, <coughs> we will have such a dependency and need for the Holy Spirit, a need for the Holy Spirit. Come Holy Spirit, come this morning. Come Holy Spirit, come and speak to our hearts and shift and help us. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Good morning. Good to be here. I uh, was in Joburg for the last three days. Uh, just needed to take care of some family stuff. Um, <clears throat> and uh, it's amazing how um, we, like never before, we need, uh, we need the Holy Spirit in our lives. You know, um, my sister lost her husband while I was in, in the States. And so <clears throat> uh, I realized this last week, two weeks that she was going through a difficult time. And so I went up there and went and ministered to her. And sometimes we don't know what to say, but we need your Holy Spirit. And, um, and it's amazing what the Holy Spirit is able to do and how the Holy Spirit is able to um, minister and give us wisdom and guidance. And um, last week I spoke about uh, Jesus speaking about referring to the Holy Spirit as the Spirit of truth and how... He will guide us into all truth. And that, that's the powerful, Jesus said, and when the spirit of truth comes, he'll guide you into all truth. And when you think about that, that word guide is a, is a powerful word because the Holy, it, it means that the Holy Spirit is not going to force you into all truth. He's going to guide you. Now, if you think about a guide in your life, right, someone can be your guide, but if you're not willing to follow, I mean... That guy is, doesn't mean anything in your life. But when, when, you, receive, when you receive a guide, and uh, you know, men don't like to take, uh, men don't like to, fa- to, to, to find uh, directions. You know, we, t- we prefer driving in circles, right? And um, my wife would say to me before GPS, she'd say to me, babe, just stop and ask for direction. I said, don't worry, we'll find the place now, <laughs> right? And... Uh, and now she gets frustrated with me. Sometimes she says, babe, way says goes, go left, right? I said, babe, you know what? That's going to take us another direction. <laughs> let me, let, we're going we're gonna to go here, right? And, um, but if, you, if, you, if you're going to receive the Holy Spirit as a guide, right, then you have to be open to the guide, right? And, um, <clears throat> you know, it's amazing. I tell you something, when you, when you tap into this, Indeed, it's, it's kind of like been an awesome journey for me, and I pray that it'll be an awesome journey for us. But um, the other night, uh, I, was, I had to see someone, and um, uh, when I got to Johannesburg, I, I, I rented a car, and uh, uh, when, I got, when I got to the table, the guy said to me, oh, um, 
We've upgraded you for free. So I said, thank you very much. Bless you, you know. And um, so uh, the other night I was visiting some, someone and ministering to them. And, and um, as, they, as we came out and they said, they said, you know that this, the car you're driving, is a, you're a target in Johannesburg with that car. <laughs> I think to myself, is that why you gave me an upgrade? Because nobody else wants, wants that. You know, they say, this car, this is, these are the cars that they hijack left, right, and center, right? And uh, uh, we, they said, we wouldn't be found in that car. And, um, uh, and this, was, this was like, I think it was like, after 11.30 at night, and I still had to go drive to where I was staying, right? As I, get into the mic, as I got into the car, how many of you know that somebody can say something and their words can kind of, you know, put fear in you? And as I got into the car and I started the car, I heard the voice. And the voice said, don't fear, I'm here. I mean, I just, Tell you something, fear just, any form of fear just left just like that, right? And uh, it's because we have the Holy Spirit, come on, he wants to guide us. He's the spirit of truth, not of the lie, of the spirit of truth. And, and we, we, he's not a force, I keep reminding us, he's not a force. We have to get to a point where we understand and receive him as a person uh, that has a presence, that, that he wants to be present in our lives. And, um, and, and when, when, we allow, when we receive him as a person and we recognize that he's present, Jesus said that he will be with us. 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 And when he comes, you can't separate the presence of the Holy Spirit and the person from the Holy Spirit from the power of God. You know, but we have to stop seeing him as this, you know, whenever the force, we have to see him as a person because out of that relationship, uh, we begin to experience more and more. And Jesus promised us, he said, I'll send you, I'll, uh, the, I'll send you the promise of my father, the Holy Spirit. And you know, um, I, I mentioned this a uh, couple of weeks ago, but when the disciples, the disciples that were, had the best teacher, they had all the miracles, right, and everything. And yet when Jesus went to the cross and he died, right, what happened? They were full of fear. The Bible says that when Jesus came back to them, the scripture says they were fearful of the Jews. They were full of fear because their, their Messiah, their Savior had been killed. And Jesus has to come. And, and after all of this experience that they've had, the best teaching, the miraculous and all that, Jesus says to them, Jesus says this to them. He says, for the next part of this journey, you are going to need the helper. Can I say to you this morning, for this next part of our journey, we are going to need the helper like never before. And if you, if you, if you want the help, then he's not a force, he's a person. He has a presence. Begin to develop a relationship. Become to that place that uh, I, I know for, you know, uh, you know, because of teaching, you know, there was a time that we referred to him as the Holy Ghost. So when we referred to him as the Holy Ghost, people say, oh, I don't speak to ghosts, right? He's, he's a person. He's the Holy Spirit. You have to learn to have a conversation. You have to learn to, to embrace him, recognize that he's there. You can talk to him because he's help. He's help. And Jesus says he'll guide us into all truth. And uh, uh, I keep reminding us that Jesus said he'll be the helper. And if you, if you, um, if you want to understand the help, then I keep, I keep mentioning it. He, he comforts, he's an advocate, he's an intercessor, he's a counselor, he's a strengthener, and he's a standby. He's right with you. He can, he can, he can provide help and he can, he can give you comfort in the worst situations, right? And... Um, the longer this journey goes, we have to come to a point because the, the disciples, you must see the radicalness of how the disciples' lives were changed from before they had the Holy Spirit to when they had the Holy Spirit. They were different people. And um, 
Jesus said in, in, in Acts chapter 1, and this is our challenge, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and you'll be my witnesses. You'll be living proof, living proof, living proof of what God can do. You, well, that is, when we witnesses, we become living proof. But at the same time, I mentioned that the word witness speaks about the word martyr. It comes from the Greek word martus, which speaks about martyr, which means that when we, so there's going to be times when we, when we share this gospel that people may not like it, may not want it, whatever, and somehow we may be persecuted for the sake of the gospel. And, Jesus, and, and if we go back to that scripture, it says, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and you'll be my witnesses, telling people about me everywhere. Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and the ends of the earth. You know what? Can I say to us? We have to, get, we have to become alert to the opportunities, wherever we find ourselves, right? Even last night on the plane, we have to become alert to the opportunities that God is presenting us because sometimes it's just that word that you speak that begins to trigger something in, 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 in someone. Sometimes it's that act of kindness, right? That, that, that just begins to make a difference in, in people's lives because we have to be witnesses wherever we are, wherever we find ourselves. And um, listen to what Jesus says, telling people everywhere. And um, we, we have to be people on a mission, challenging. Uh, God is challenging us to be people on a mission, to be an active presence of Jesus in the world that we live in. An active presence. And so today I want to continue about the spirit of truth. I touched on it last week. We, we only got a little bit uh, into it. But in, 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 in John chapter 16, verse 13, it's, Jesus said that when he, the spirit of truth, comes, he will guide us into all, all truth. And I, the, the message or the key to the message in this next couple of weeks is that to be an effective, faithful witness, right? We ha there must be a marriage between the power of the Holy Spirit and the character of Jesus. To be an effective witness and faithful witness, there has to be a marriage or connection between the power of the Holy Spirit and the character of Jesus. How many of you know that we must be the same person that stands and worships here on a Sunday morning? The same person, we must be that same person outside. Right, we have to we have to be there. And 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 you know what? This is training ground in here. We have to learn to love one another. Because when we can love one another in here, we can love other people. Okay? And um, the Holy Spirit of truth wants to transform us into becoming more and more like Jesus. Let me let me let me reiterate this. It's not about perfection but it's about becoming more and more like Jesus. And when we speak about the character of Jesus, we're speaking about, in this, in this way, we started last week, we're speaking about the fruit of the Spirit, because the character of Jesus is the fruit of the Spirit. And the, the fruit of the Spirit is the evidence of the Spirit at work in my life. Right? And um, I love the examples in Scripture, because um, I was thinking about Stephen, uh, you know, in Acts chapter 6, and there wasn't much spoken about Stephen, but the disciples was looking for some people that would serve tables, and so they found, they found this group of people, and Stephen was one of those people. And the Bible says the thing about Stephen, he was full of the Spirit. He was filled with the Spirit. And so later on, we come to find that Stephen, not only, um, he's not only uh, being a... A, a serving tables, but he starts to preach. And, and later on, we find that Stephen um, has to say, his life, his life is taken because of sharing the gospel. But what you see in Stephen's life as they're about to stone him is you see the character of Jesus, the love, the peace, the joy that comes out of his life. And yet the Bible says this, it says, when Stephen spoke, their hearts were convicted. They had a choice. 
that they could either accept Jesus, which they didn't do, or they had to get rid of the witness. And so they got rid of the witness. And um, <clears throat> so our effective and faithful witness depends on our willingness to allow the spirit of truth to empower and develop the character. I want to, I want to read, uh, go back to Galatians chapter 5 and verse 22 to 25 where we, where we uh, uh, camped a bit last week. It says, but the Holy Spirit produces this kind of fruit in our lives. That's so important for us this morning because understand this, that the Holy Spirit produces. I don't know about you, that I've had my moments where I've tried to really work hard at being better. Right? Okay? We have, we try to be patient, right? And a lot of us, when we pray for patience, have you noticed what happens a day later? Right? I mean, it seems like everything that happens in your life messes with your patience. And you, every time you pray and you say, Lord, help me to be kind, and then the oak just cuts you off, right? And, uh, and everybody is waiting in the queue, uh, in, in the traffic, right? right? And the taxi driver comes right next to you. He's, he's avoided everything, and he comes right next to you. And, uh, ach, unkindness. <laughs> right? But, but it's important for us to understand, the scripture says, but the Holy Spirit produces. This is, this is his job. So the evidence of the, of the Holy Spirit at work in my life produces the fruit. And I said last week that the, the fruit of the Spirit, in the Greek, it's not plural, it's singular. So we're not talking about, like, it's a bouquet, Right? A fruit bouquet that the Holy Spirit produces. It's not just like one, 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 one. He is working on the fruit. So when he's working in my life, then the fruit is produced. Not just the patience, but the fruit. It's, it's the bouquet that he brings into my life. The, that fruit bouquet that includes love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, long-suffering, all, the, all those things. And so the scripture says, but the Holy Spirit produces this kind of fruit in our lives, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. And so um, we, 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 uh, uh, we want to continue with that, but let me just say that, that Paul refers to them all as evidence of the Holy Spirit. And these are not nine demands placed on your life, but it's a picture of what can happen when we invite the spirit of truth into our lives to guide us, right? To develop those, those things. And Jesus said that when the spirit of truth is at work in us, you, he'll guide you and you become a work in progress. Not, not a perfection, but you become a work in progress. Uh, in Ephesians chapter 4, and we touched on the scripture last week, Ephesians chapter 4, verse 21 to 24, Paul writes, he says, Since you have heard about Jesus and have learned the truth that comes from him, throw off your old sinful nature and your former way of life, which is corrupted by lust and deception. And here he gives us a key. He said, Instead, let the Spirit renew your thoughts and your attitude. Let the Spirit grab hold of the way you think, and let the Spirit grab hold of your attitudes, right? And this is how the Holy Spirit works. He produces the fruit, but we have to allow the Spirit to renew our thoughts and our attitudes. Now, if you've been in this church long enough, you know that, that there's a statement that I live by, the sum of your thoughts determines your actions. The sum of your actions determines your habits. The sum of your habits determines your character. And the sum of your character determines your destiny. So when your thoughts are in alignment, your actions change, your habits become different, right? Your character changes, 
and the outcome of your life, the destiny of your life change, changes. So it's what the Holy Spirit can do in us. And so the gist of my message in this next couple of weeks is that for us to be effective and faithful witnesses, we have to marry the power of God, the power of the Holy Spirit, with the character of Jesus. In other words, the character of Jesus needs to connect with the power. And last week, we only got to touch on one. And Paul writes, but the fruit of the Spirit is one love. And we spoke about the fact that love is choosing to act for another, another person's highest good. Love. And love is not an emotion. It's an action. God so loved the world that he gave. If you're going to love, you're going to have to give. And love is choosing to, choosing, uh, uh, to act or choosing to do something for another person's highest good. Love requires a- action. And sometimes we don't know the highest good in a situation for a person, but that's where we need the Holy Spirit, right? Um, have you ever got into a situation where you're not sure how to navigate life with someone? They're either so difficult or so complicated, right? Everything you do, just kind of like, it's not good enough. And we have to to become dependent on the Holy Spirit. Um, I know a good example of that, and then I want to move on to the second one. But a good example of that is when we read about David's life, David was, all David wanted to do was serve Saul well. Everything was about serving the king. Everything he wanted to do, do. And all Saul did, Saul found David to be a threat. And he treated David badly, right? And at, at one point when, when they, they came into a cave and David and his men came into the cave because they were fearful of Saul and they were hiding, they were going to hide in the cave, guess who they find in the cave? Saul. And Saul is sleeping. And David's men says to him, surely the Lord has delivered your enemy into your hands. And David was, was, was that close to killing Saul because he took his sword and he cut his robe. Right? And then he heard the voice of the Lord that says, don't touch my anointed. Right? And The highest good for Saul that day was not David killing him, but David walking away. And sometimes when, when we're faced with circumstances and situations, particularly in relationships, love is seeking the highest good for someone. And sometimes we don't understand what the highest good is. But, we have, but that's where the Holy Spirit comes in. Because sometimes it is a hard, it, sometimes they, they call it tough love. Sometimes it is tough love. But sometimes the approach is completely different where God is asking us just one act of kindness can change someone's life just like that. Right? But I want to continue, we touched, we spoke about that last, I want to continue with the second one this morning, because Paul writes to us and he says, the fruit of the Spirit or the character of Jesus is love, and then he says the second one is joy. How many of you know that the joy, Nehemiah 8 verse 10 says that the joy of the Lord is your strength. That means if you have joy, that no matter what you face in life, I'm not talking about happiness this morning because we can be unhappy about a lot of stuff. I'm speaking about joy. When you have joy, you have strength. And, and it's, it's a work, as the scripture says, the Holy Spirit produces the joy in my life. When I allow him to work in my life, then the Holy Spirit produces the joy in my life. Now, let me give you a a definition of joy this morning. Joy is living in God's presence with gratitude. Joy is living in his presence with gratitude. 
And you see, we, can, we've, we face so many difficult situations. We can become so unhappy, and yet joy can be the foundation on which our hope stands. Joy is the assurance the con- of, of a confidence in Jesus that we have a foundation and that he's our living hope and joy will keep us strong. Joy is living in his presence with gratitude. You know what? You know how often we get caught up with focusing on what we don't have and not recognizing what we do have. I, we, you, you, know, you know, you speak to, you speak to people and, and there's negative stuff that is flowing out, right? You know, there, there's something that I, I, we all read it at some point. They said, I stopped complaining about the shoes that I, that I have when I saw the man without legs, Right? And I mean, there's, there's so much that we have, but when we allow, we allow the Holy Spirit to begin to produce this fruit in us, then joy becomes uh, uh, the fact that I'm living in his presence, but I'm living in his presence with gratitude. So much that we can complain of, but let me tell you something, there's so much that we can be grateful for. Psalm 16 verse 11 says, you will show me the path of life. In your presence, in your presence is fullness of joy. Let me say to you this morning that if you lack gratitude, you need the Holy Spirit. You need the Holy Spirit. I mean, I, I, I have to be careful, okay, because I come from Johannesburg, right? And we've been in Cape Town for a long time. And um, when I go back to Johannesburg, I see things, man. Snilekani. It's not good. And I have to be careful that I don't become like a you know a sour ball by constantly referring or comparing Cape Town to Joburg. But I tell you something. I, I drive in the car. And I just say, thank you, God. Thank you. Thank you. We live in one of the most beautiful places. I mean, we get to go to, I get to take a drive to the beach. I sit at the beach. It's my space. It's a place that I, I commune a lot with the Lord. And I don't pay a cent for that view. I mean, it's just beautiful. Now often people, how many people in our province don't make, take the time to do that? You know, just don't take the time to. Sometimes we just have to stop and smell the roses. Right? It says, in your presence is fullness of joy at your right hand are pleasures from, uh, forevermore. See, when we lack gratitude, we lack the presence and the work of the Holy Spirit in our life. You, you, we need the Holy Spirit. Sometimes we just have to stop. You know, um, I have these moments, right? And recently, I had two of those moments. Um, we, uh, we had a situation at the church. Keith and I was dealing with this at the church where they stole all the cables in front, and so none of the gates were working. And we... <laughs> Keith is such a blessing to, to me because <laughs> I can kind of like uh, vent my frustration sometimes. And, and he just he says, don't worry, I'll be there. Right? And he's a blessing to us. Keith, I want to I bless you. You're such a blessing to us. Thank you so much for what you do. For me, just knowing and having you as um, a blessing to us. And... Um, and, you know, there's so much that one can complain about. Yeah, but a while ago, I, was, I came into the, the property, and I, I drove, in, drove in, and I was alone here. And as I pulled my car into the parking lot, I sat, and I couldn't get out of the car. I sat there just saying, thank you, thank you, God. 
I mean, we have an amazing place that God has blessed us with. I am helping pastors in this area that through COVID lost their rental facilities. And they don't know where they're going to go to next. Should we rent? Shouldn't we? For six months, we were paying 25,000 rand a month, and we weren't using our facilities. Come on. Joy is in his presence, just having gratitude. And this morning, can we just have, I know it's not perfect, but can we just have gratitude, right? I came home the other day, and you know my love for my garden, right? And my garden wasn't looking nice. And I sat in my driveway, and I thought, sure, man, this garden. And then I stopped, and Lord, Lord, thank you for our home. Thank you that we have a home that a lot of people don't have. A home. We have a home. You know, joy neutralizes discontentment. Joy, get it this morning, joy neutralizes discontentment, right? The Apostle Paul wrote this, Philippians chapter 4, verse 11 to 13. Listen to what he says. Not that I was ever in need. Now, let me just say something. That is a perspective because there was times that he didn't have. Right? But when you have joy in your heart, then it's like, not that I was ever in need. Not that I was ever down and out. Because God, we have God on our side. He says, not that I was ever in need. Look what he says. He says, for I have learned how to be content with whatever I have. Right? That's a work of the Holy Spirit. That I learn that he produces that fruit. I have learned how to be content with whatever I have. Now he goes to the next level. Listen to what he says. I know how to live on almost nothing or with everything. What did he start off? He said, he said I've never had a need. No, no, but it's all about perspective, a perspective that the Holy Spirit gives us, right? He says, I know how to live on almost nothing or with everything. I have learned the secret of living in every situation. Come on, church. The Holy Spirit wants to help us to live, to, le- le- to have the secret of being a- able to live in every situation that we find ourselves. He he refers it to it this way. He says, whether it is with a full stomach or an empty, with plenty or with a little. And that, yes, that refers to food. But you and I know that there's other situations in our lives that we have to learn to be content with. Right? But it's, it's in his presence. In his presence, as I recognize the Holy Spirit, not as a force, but as a person, as a presence, that I begin to find gratitude. Joy is, 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 is gratitude that I find in his presence. He says, whether it is full, whether it is with a full stomach or empty, with plenty or with little, and now I'm going to blow your mind this morning because you all quote the scripture. But here's the context of that scripture, verse 13. Next. For I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And I know many of you have quoted that one. Now I want you to think, when you quote it again, the context of where it comes from. Contentment. Because joy neutralizes discontentment. If you're discontent this morning, I mean, I, come on, let's just begin to smell the roses. Let's begin to be thankful. God is good. God is good. God is good. God is good. Listen to his perspective. Living in his presence with gratitude. But you see, that doesn't just happen. It's a fruit of the Spirit. 
Because, you know, most people confuse happiness and joy. Right? You have today, you can be happy. But if you have joy, then even though you don't have enough, you still have joy. Right? I've had the time when I had a car, and there's another time when I walked. But you can't lose your joy. You can't lose your joy. I often say to people, some people say, a guy said to me, you know table view very well, don't you? I said, yes, I do. I said, it's a different thing driving into a cul-de-sac. It's another thing when you're walking into one. <laughs> right? Because for six months, when we moved here, I never had a car. And I walked and prayed. Right? But you cannot lose your joy. You can have an unhappy day when you walk out and halfway there, the rain comes down and you are sopping wet. But you don't have to lose your joy. It's living in his presence with gratitude. But it's, it's produced by the Spirit. It's not something I'm trying to wind up Today, I'm going to be joyful, right? Because I can tell you now, you wake up to this tomorrow morning and say, today I'm going to be joyful. By lunchtime, something's going to happen, and it's going to nail you. But when it's the work of the Spirit, the Holy Spirit produces this. It's evidence of the Spirit at work in my life. And when, if we are going to be effective witnesses, faithful witnesses, we have to marry the power of the Holy Spirit with the character of Jesus. Because when people out there look at you and they say, how come all this stuff is happening? But you're still grateful. What makes the difference? Keith knows, I'm a very I get very unhappy when they do all these things. I'm frustrated when they do these things. But you don't lose your joy. The joy of the Lord is your strength. It's the thing that helps you to keep going, continuing, continuing. But it's a work of the Spirit, it's not something. It's, I, I plan to do three, and I, um, last week I did one, and I bet I'm only going to do two this morning, right? And, and Paul writes, he's, he says, but the fruit, are you getting this this morning? Are you getting it? The, the gist of the message is this, that our effectiveness and faithfulness as witnesses is dependent on marrying the power of God with the character of Jesus, the fruit of the Spirit. But it's not something we try to do on our own when we allow, when he, the Spirit of truth, comes, he will guide you. He will guide you. You have to allow him. You have to allow him to begin to do this in you. And, and Paul writes, he says, um, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, next one, peace. Remember, we're not talking about it as individual, we're talking about the fruit bouquet that God wants to establish in your life, right? Peace. Peace is the absence of all that inner conflict. It's a work of the Spirit. You know, I, I was um, ministering to my sister, you know, and uh, uh, and allowing the Holy Spirit to restore that peace and take away that inner conflict that we often have. See, peace is not dependent on what's happening outside. In the midst of external circumstances, all the, everything that's happening around you, you can still have peace. In the midst of whatever happens in our nation, we can still have peace. It's a work of the Spirit. It's not, it's not up to me. It's a work of the Spirit. Listen to what Jesus says in John chapter 14, verse 27. He says this. He says, I'm leaving you a gift. I'm leaving you a gift. How many of you have had to work for a gift? 
No, you don't work for the gift. It's there for you. It's a gift. Who wants a gift this morning? Yeah. Right? You want a gift? <laughs> right? Jesus says, I'm leaving you a gift. Listen to what he says. Peace of mind and peace in your heart. Peace of mind, peace in your heart. You know, it's one thing having peace up here, but it's another thing when there's peace in you. Right? You know, you know if, 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 if I came to you this morning, right? Who has, a, who, who, who has a desperate financial need here this morning? Who has a, you have a desperate financial need? He has a desperate financial need. Right? You have a desperate financial need, Toto? I'm going to give you... Yeah, come and take it. No, no, take it. Take it. Take it. That's peace in your mind, my boy. Well, it's, it's, it's an illustration. That's peace in your mind. Because I met your need. Let me tell you something. Jesus wants to put peace in your heart. Amen. And when there's peace in your heart, there's no inner conflict. So be blessed this morning. God told me to do that. We have, sorry, for those that didn't put their hand up, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Walala wasala. You snooze, you lose. <laughs> right? God told me to do that. It's an illustration, but God told me to do that this morning. That's peace in it for the mind. Because a man met that need. Let me tell you something. When you get peace of Jesus in your heart, it's a completely different thing. Completely. Jesus says, I'm giving you a gift. Peace of mind, peace of heart. And the peace I give is a gift that the world cannot give. I gave you a worldly gift this morning, Goto. But the peace that Jesus gives you is a peace that the world cannot give. And when he puts peace in your heart, listen to what happens. You're not troubled and you're not afraid. You know why? Because you know, because I know, because I know, he holds my future. Come on. He holds my future. He holds my future. Jesus says, I'm, I'm giving you a gift. And he says, let the spirit of truth guide you. Right? It is, it is the, the evidence of the Holy Spirit at work in us that we can have peace in the midst of the most difficult situation. You know, I've gone to places years ago where I didn't know how I was going to get home because I only had gas to get me there. And it wasn't foolishness because I was on an assignment with God. He wanted me to go. He ever knows that. And I stood there and I remember one place, I, I went back to my car, and I'm sitting in my car, and I'm saying, okay, it hasn't happened. <laughs> you haven't provided. And I started the car, and I was, driving, I was about to drive off when I heard someone knock on the window and say, Pastor, I don't know why, but the Lord told me to do this, right? Because in the midst of whatever, we don't have to be troubled or afraid because we can, we can have God's peace in our lives. You realize something today? There will never be peace in this world unless Jesus is at the table. Amen. Yes. Unless he's at the table. 
peace. You know, we speak about this and we speak about, uh, we use the word peace, we use it as a blessing or we use it as a greeting. But peace includes completeness. It includes health. It includes safety. It includes prosperity. When I got into the car the other night, right, what happened? You know, someone can say to me, hey, don't worry, because we do this, we say this. Don't worry, I'll pray that you get home safely. <laughs> right? We can say that. And sometimes we don't even pray. I've learned something. I pray in the moment. Because I forget. Right? And they can say, don't worry, you'll, you'll get home safely. But how many of you know, when I got into that car, and he said, I'm here with you. It wasn't a peace up here. It became a peace in here. A peace that is absent of that trouble, of that fear, of all that, all that stuff. So this morning... Jesus says to us, he says, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you and you'll become my witnesses. But to be an effective, faithful witness, we have to marry the power of the Holy Spirit with the character of Jesus. How many of you will, how many of you will follow someone, right, that is trying to tell you about Jesus, but you know that they live like a hog. Their lives don't line up. And God, in, in this season, the Holy Spirit wants to produce the, the love that we need to reach people. And he wants to produce the joy, not only in our minds, but in our heart. Uh, 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 the joy that he wants to produce and the peace, not only in our, our, our minds, but in our hearts. That when people look at us and they say, there's something different about you. And it's not a nice savior. It's a work of the Spirit. Amen. Let's see you. Is he here? Amen. Let's, let's bow our heads this morning. I hope I didn't embarrass you. I just want to bless you. Lord, thank you for the Holy Spirit. Would you thank the Lord this morning for the Spirit of Truth this morning? Thank you for the Holy Spirit that has been sent to be our help. Thank you, Jesus, that you said that when the Spirit of Truth comes, He'll guide us. How many of you this morning want to be an effective, faithful witness for Jesus? I challenged us and I said, in this next season, let's believe God for every one of us to reach one person for Jesus. Not impossible. We begin to pray for them. But for us to be effective, faithful witnesses, we need the power of the Holy Spirit, but we also need the character of Jesus. There's some things that are happening in our community that if we're honest with ourselves, frustrate us. We need to find that love and that compassion. There's some things that are happen in our workplaces and everybody can be grumbling and discontented. 
But the Holy Spirit wants to produce joy in us. And uh, I know when we get into social, social situations, conversations about what's happening in our country and all that type of stuff. And we can join the party of that God wants to give us a peace in the midst of that. And it's a work of the Spirit. Knowing that we can have peace in our minds, peace in our hearts. Can we ask the Holy Spirit this morning to empower us. Would you allow this morning say come spirit of truth this morning. Come and work in my heart today. Come and produce the fruit that can make me an effective faithful witness for Jesus. Lord thank you this morning for your word. Thank you for the Holy Spirit this morning that's so alive and so well and so desiring to be our help and be with us. Help us as your, your, your children to open up our hearts to the Holy Spirit. We need you so much. We need you, Holy Spirit. We need you. Come and produce the fruit. We can't do that in our own strength, but come and produce that in us. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Have an awesome week. Have an awesome day. Amen.